Yeah. What, other, what other favorite memories do you have growing up here in Cache Valley? Oh, I have so many wonderful memories. Uh, uh, one, the first summer that I worked out uh, in the fields pitching hay. Now, that can be a dirty, sweaty business, but uh, uh, the uh, I used to spend a week pitching hay, and the next year we had uh, hay bales came in, the, the mechanisms for uh Really? for baling the hay, hay up and so then you just had to yes. throw bales around yes, instead right. of with a pitchfork. I know. So this, this dates me that I actually date back to yeah. that era. Yeah. Picking beans, so you know, right. picking the beans, <laughs> talking the sugar beets. <laughs> the sugar beets. We, that's, was, that's where you learn what really hard work is. Yeah, I don't know where kids get that today, but, but, but you work your butt uh -huh. off out in these farm fields doing these kinds of things and you and, and, and I think, at least for me, that's when I decide there's got to be some life that's more, <laughs> a little less arduous than this and can still be a lot of fun. <laughs> but there was also a social aspect. Of it. It, it was. Friends doing, yeah. doing that. But, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it was not what you wanted to spend on. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I. I uh, setting pins in a bowling alley, that's another job I have. Uh -huh. uh, and working at Wingetts, uh, which at the time they made, among other things, ice cream bars. And uh, I got to that dip the ice job. By, by, by hand, I got to dip the ice cream bar into the chocolate and pull it out, cover the chocolate. And occasionally I would accidentally drop the ice cream bar in, so I had to reach all the way in to pull it out. <laughs> And then lick it off. Uh, yeah, that was the plush job. I, I worked in a grocery store bagging up groceries and putting cans on shelves. So. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed our band, though, and the debate. Uh, sorry, I'm yeah. on the debate squad. Merlin Olson is my partner. Mm -hmm. And before that, uh, Lynn Crockett, who was, I guess she's left. She's here at the reunion. Yeah. And, uh, that was, those were always fun because. Yeah. Just to get ready for the for the you know debating the other school teams, we had to go up against each other all the time. And yeah, you know, those were real dog fights. You, know. you just didn't want to get Merlin too mad. <laughs> say say too many mean things because he, <laughs> he might use muscle instead of brains. I do. Remember. By the way, Merlin was a very very smart guy. Yeah, he was really brilliant uh, in college. Uh, my mother finally was allowed to teach, uh, I think, uh, uh, at one point when he was taking a course. Uh, she taught an ec economics class. She wasn't on the regular faculty, but she taught an economics class. She said she was sure he never opened the book, but he always got the best scores on all the exams. <laughs> Good. How does it feel being back here in um, Cache Valley? I, I just love coming back. And so mm -hmm. it's, just driving into the valley, <coughs> well, driving up uh, through Dry Lake, and uh, yeah, and uh, then on down into the valley. It's just uh, sort of warms yeah. my heart when I look out and I, I see this gorgeous valley. And I, I was remembering riding my bicycle across uh, when I had a crush on a girl who lived in Wellsville. <laughs> driving my bicycle, what nine or ten miles across? Is that is that her? <laughs> and, and I I remember that, that I think it was my only once or twice I drove drove that far, but uh, just marveling at how beautiful the valley was while I was riding my bike across. How did you react when you heard that they were going to name a new boulevard in your honor? Well, I was a bit, more than a bit taken back, uh, and little, more than a little embarrassed. Um, but uh, it's a huge honor. It's a huge honor. Um, and I, the one thing that troubles me about it all is that I treasure my uh, relationship with my classmates. And I don't want them to treat me any differently than they ever did. <laughs> I'm just hoping that, that that's the case. Um, so, like, in addition to feeling embarrassed, you feel some like proud and accomplished to be uh, one of Logan's first two Nobel Prize winners. Well, I'm proud in the sense that uh, I think it does reflect on Logan's a very special place. Uh, and so I'm proud in that sense. Uh, I think I'm 
hope I make clear in the lecture that I feel that, that the, in my case, Nobel Prize was a little out of place because it was the whole team that should have gone. But, uh, but still, I think that uh, uh, it is. I get pleasure out of, uh, in some way, uh, helping people really appreciate uh, what the Logan City Schools have done for me and, and, and can do and have done for other people. And in some ways, these two Nobel Prizes are an indication of, uh, of uh, the educational system here. What would you like to share with students who aspire to do the work that you do? I love it. If you're going to do it, you need to love it. If you don't love it, find something else that you do love but that, uh, that uh, satisfies you in terms of what it may do for humanity. Uh, but uh, I think uh, if you're going to spend your life doing something as your principal application, uh, it should be something that you really enjoy. If it's possible to find uh, something and make a living at something you enjoy, if, if you can't make a living at it, okay, well then do it on the side. Mm -hmm. um, you, during your work on your cellar, what was it like to use your, um, use your knowledge to help improve a movie that millions of people would see? Uh, I had enormous fun. So the movie involved a huge amount of brainstorming between me and uh, Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Nolan. Jonathan, or Jonah as we call him, was the screenwriter who wrote the first three drafts of the screenplay and has become much more famous since then because he created and was the head honcho on Persons of Interest TV series, and more recently he and his wife, Lisa Joy uh, Westwood. But at that time he'd done nothing except uh, write three screenplays for his brother. Uh, and uh, But he was fabulous to work with, and it was a brainstorming process. And, uh, and that uh, it came out as well as it did. I'm really pleased, I'm not terribly surprised, because they were, they and everybody worked on the movie was enthusiastic about, dedicated to making a movie based on real science, with real science embedded deeply in it. Great. What would you like to say to students who may want to do that as a career field, work as a scientific consultant? Uh, I think it's a very important thing to do. Uh, the film has a huge impact on people worldwide. <laughs> and if you uh, can succeed in embedding real science in a compelling way into a film, that can be a tremendous inspiration. Uh, I'll give you an example from Interstellar. And, uh, in Korea, uh, there are 50 million people in Korea. They sold 10 million tickets to Interstellar. It was because the government uh, regards of Korea, of Korea, South Korea, regards uh, humans as their only really strong natural resource. They don't have minerals. They don't have oil and so forth. And uh, the uh, uh, technical education of the entire populace is tremendously important to them. And so the government uh, encouraged parents to take their children to this movie. And uh, I went to Korea a few months after the movie came out. They had a special event uh, there at which the first speaker was the President of Korea, second speaker was the Secretary General of the United Nations, and I was the third speaker. And it was at that level that uh, the uh, impact of this film had, was had there, very different than anywhere else in the world, but it was really quite remarkable. And uh, uh, and I am told by friends in Korea that it did have a huge impact in terms of inspiring the young people. What are some of your feelings about knowing how big of an impact that is? Well, I have a lot of satisfaction about it. Uh, Again, like the discovery of gravitational waves, uh, in terms of impact, I put my energy in the right place. But in both cases, it was also, both things were a huge amount of fun, and I thoroughly enjoyed them. So that has, for me, that double effect of big impact uh, and uh, great joy in doing it. Is there anything else that you would like to share to readers of this story? Um, or USC students, or people who look up to you as a scientist? Only that I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> uh, 
I had some wisdom about what I chose to do with my life. And it's not that I'm so smart and did it so well, but rather that I uh, put a lot of care into uh, deciding what to do and then into choosing people to work with who themselves were very, very good. And uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, having enormous talent is not necessary uh, for ha having an impact. Uh, you can still have an impact by wisely choosing what you work on and wisely choosing who you work with.